Good afternoon to you. Mark Stoddoth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for the 4th of July 2017. Hope you're having a great Tuesday and a great 4th of July out there. Let's take a look at what's going on in the tropics this afternoon. We do have this area of interest in the Atlantic Basin, Invest 94L, 70% chance of formation over the next 48 hours, 80% over the next 5 days. Uh, if we look at the visible satellite animation of it this afternoon, here it is, located way out here in the deep tropics in the open central Atlantic. Fairly large, it's still kind of attached to this monsoon trough out here, this area of lower pressure and a little bit of a wind shift, uh, kind of like a grapevine that these grapes try to form off of is the way I look at it. And this one is struggling a little bit. There's still some dry air to the north. And overall, it's got a pretty vigorous little circulation, no doubt. But the thunderstorms, when they develop, they are either collapsing because they're ingesting some of that dry air, or they are simply not bundling together. And we're going to look at the vorticity signature of that in just a moment, in which case we'll be able to get a better representation of how the system looks. In the eastern Pacific, we do have several areas to watch. It looks like the East Pacific is getting ready to just be off to the races, to which I say, wait, you know, not so fast. Remember all that cold water that is lurking out this way? Uh, we're going to look at that later on in the updated sea surface temperature anomalies graphic. And the only area that's really looking favorable right now is this one, and this is Invest Area 94E. And if we look at that satellite animation this afternoon, first of all, anytime you see this Mickey Mouse symbol right there show up it's not a sign of organization uh, sorry I mean this looks sort of like a, a struggling Atlantic system not to pick on the Atlantic basin too much but you know you can see the low-level circulation there and that's where where that, that Mickey Mouse tries to pop up there at the end uh, this is moving over colder water there's a stable air mass in place and so this is struggling might not even become a tropical storm We'll see. So back to 94L, I want to show you the vorticity signature out here. And uh, this is a great product, again, from the University of Wisconsin Cooperative Institute for Meteorological Satellite Studies. And it really shows you the structure here. And there's that oblong sort of amorphic shape. And as I talk about a lot, we're looking for this to be more round if we're expecting it to, de to develop and it's just not doing that yet. It is concentrating the vorticity a little bit more down here, but you still have sort of this linear shape to it, and that is not a sign of increasing organization. And as such, the Hurricane Center mentions that it has not become any better organized today. So what's going to happen with it? Well, let's take a look at the initial condition here from today's GFS run. This is the 12Z run. And remember, I just showed you this. This is the initial map. Uh, at hour zero, right there, see? And it is elongated here, and I'll take the blue away in just a minute. So it got the initialization correct with the signature at 850 millibars in the atmosphere. It's about 5,000 feet up, sort of that long, stretched out area of energy. And just real quick, we'll go back just to remind you, and I think this is impressive, that this right here matches, see it there, very well what the GFS initialized this with on the 12Z run today. So keep your eye on this area here, and then over the next few days as it moves out into this region, I'll draw it in yellow overall so it's not as hard to see. And it really doesn't do much, but might still become a tropical depression. You see the vorticity doesn't increase very much in there. Um, maybe enough to become TD number four, I guess it would be and perhaps even Tropical Storm Dawn for a brief time. But then conditions just aren't favorable. There are some stronger upper-level winds uh, waiting for it over in this vicinity. And I think the increase in shear and the fact that the Saharan air layer may follow it somewhat, um, the GFS at least here does not do much with it. But again, it could still become a tropical storm. And if it does so, while still down here in the main development region, as we see through about the next three days, that would be pretty impressive for July. And I think another sort of check mark in the box that uh, would favor a very active season to come. So we'll keep an eye on that. Looking at the upper ocean heat content, 
where the system is located out here, 94L. Plenty of upper ocean heat content to take advantage of. Um, the Gulf of Mexico is still lacking, uh, but you know, once we get to August and September, you know as well as I do that it will be plenty warm, and it's not like we have water temperatures that are cold necessarily. It's just not as warm as we have seen in recent years. In fact, if we look at the latest analysis, you remember where Cindy stirred up a lot of this uh, ocean in here. The Gulf was really churned up. Uh, you know, Cindy made landfall over here roughly, but all that action on the east side stirred things up quite a bit, and we had some 27 degree Celsius temperatures showing up, and now all of those have pretty much eroded away and are filled back in. All this blue color in here, cyan or whatever you want to call it, 28 degrees Celsius, and then the green is 29. And even in the eastern Gulf here up against the west coast of Florida, where the shelf water lies, those water temperatures are 30 Celsius, very, very warm. But the Gulf definitely rebounded after the passage of Cindy, and that is to be expected, and I don't see anything entering the Gulf over the next week to 10 days to stir things up again. And so these water temperatures will just continue to increase. Off the east coast of the U.S., up in the New England and mid-Atlantic states, northeast beaches, for the most part, especially New Jersey north, still a little too cold for my liking, but the Delaware Bay, Chesapeake Bay, and then on south along the beaches of North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and most of Florida, very warm water temperatures in the low 80s, and those will continue to increase as well. Now, looking at the anomaly chart, this updated yesterday, and I didn't get to show it because I left with the family to head out to the beach. We went to this little island up here. Um, locals call it Bear Island, and it's known as Hammocks, Hammocks Beach State Park. It was very nice out there, by the way, but we were gone before this came out. This usually updates around 1.30 in the afternoon Eastern Time, and I was on the beach up there. So I didn't get to show you, so I wanted to do it today because this is an important map. I really, really use this a lot. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I do because it shows us the state of the anomalies, and that's very important, um, especially when we can compare that to previous years. So what do we have? Well, the July 3rd update continues to show this very warm area in the eastern Atlantic, the deep tropics here, very warm off the east coast with Bermuda right in the center there. A cooler Gulf of Mexico, but this is rebounding again after Cindy. You also notice in the eastern Pacific, along the equatorial region, all the way out past, uh, going past the Dateline, really no signs of that El Nino coming, but then look very, well, you don't even have to look close. I mean, this is, this is why things are struggling. I mean, 94E is located in here, you know, roughly, and the other systems down here they're all going to be headed towards this area of colder anomalies off the Baja. And some of those anomalies are now poking their way down here just off the coast uh, of Mexico where we typically see these stronger hurricanes. Think back to 2014, and you know this was September when these happened, but we had Norbert and Odile that impacted this region and brought some moisture into the southwest as well. Uh, but water temperatures back then were, you know, it's just three years ago, we're quite a bit warmer. So this is a different look, and that is important because when we don't have a lot of activity in the, Atlant the Pacific, typically we have more activity in the Atlantic. And if we look at a comparison, now this is shocking, all right? Remember 2013, and remember this area right here, how warm it is in 2017's snapshot from yesterday. This is what it looked like four years ago. I mean, come on. No wonder that season collapsed in the face of, wow, it's going to be a very busy hurricane season. You remember that. That is very, very remarkable, you know, just looking at 2013. But when you compare the two and the way the rest of the main development region is, and you know, also you note in 2013 that the warmest water was way up here in the subtropics, for goodness sakes. And this year, it is completely opposite. And in fact, if we move out and we look at um, the broader picture here, let me move my toolbar over. So this is the global shot for 2017. And I want you to look at the overall configuration here 
of this AMO signature in the Atlantic, the Atlantic Multi-Decade Oscillation. And again, we're going to compare this to 2005. It's not that far off overall. Still some pretty major differences way up in the North Atlantic around Greenland and Iceland, and certainly the North Pacific was a lot warmer. But this is not nearly as warm this year as we saw, and this is a very similar situation to what we saw in 2005. And if I compare the two where I've marked it up, I mean, good grief, right? So we'll see. You know, you're never going to have an exact duplicate uh, thank goodness, because you know we just don't need another 2005 season. But this is enough to show me, you know, when we look at 2017 and what we have seen here with this 94L, and it may become Tropical Storm Don at some point. That it's probably going to be a very busy season. And to that end, uh, to celebrate the Fourth of July, I guess our friends at TropicalStormRisk.com, they are a London-based. Uh, tropical cyclone forecasting uh, firm, uh, company, whatever you want to call it, and uh, they have done research uh, into the seasonal outlooks, etc., and their forecast updated today, uh, they are indicating, um, well, they increased from their May 26th uh, outlook that 2017 will be slightly above the long-term average. I guess nobody's quite ready to pull the trigger on significantly above the long-term average, but anyway, they are predicting uh, an ACE index this year of 116, and they say plus or minus 44, but an ACE score, let me just draw over it with my tool, uh, an ACE of 116, and normally, you know, the, you know, the ACE is about 101, so, and it just depends on, you know, they're leasing a 67-year uh, span for their average, um, 99 is the 10-year average, so it would be you know, a little bit above the normal. They are predicting three major hurricanes, seven total, and a total of 17 tropical storms, and we've already had three. We had Arlene, Brett, and Cindy, so we'd have 14 more, half of those becoming hurricanes, and almost half of those becoming Cat 3 or higher. And they do have some decent skill at this time frame, so we'll see what happens. We'll see tomorrow what Dr. Phil Klotzbach and his group at Colorado State University have to say because they're going to issue a forecast update and I'll talk about that tomorrow as well. So we've got a few things to talk about but you know looking at 94L not a big concern in terms of what it by itself will do I am more interested in does it become a tropical storm and if so that's a sign, again, coming out of the main development region. It's not moving west at 25 knots and shears all around it and whatever. It's got the usual July hurdles to come uh, to overcome. And if it becomes a storm, I think it would, you know, you'd say, hey, look, that's a moral victory, so to speak, for the tropics and a sign that it's going to be a busy season, especially August and September. But don't worry about it too much. I don't see it becoming a major threat to the islands or to the southeast United States. You never say never, but that's how things look as of now. Have a great rest of your 4th of July. If you're doing outdoor activities tonight, whatever those, those may be, please be safe out there, especially with the little kids. I've got children myself. I know it's fun. I know the fireworks thing is fantastic. I'm not trying to be that grumpy old dad. But, you know, we don't want people watching these future updates where they're missing a couple of fingers. That's no fun at all. you got to have all ten of them, right? Right. So really, have a great and safe rest of your 4th of July. As always, thanks for spending a little bit of time with me today. I do appreciate it. I'm Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com, and we will talk again tomorrow afternoon.